161 years ago when West Virginia was admitted as the 35th state. But did you know it was this date in 1787 when Oliver Ellsworth moved at the federal convention to call the government the United States? Did no, you know that? I did not know that. There you go. Right There's your name of your country right there. That's how it happened. Just like that. On the same day? Same day. It was fate. 1787. Via telephone, Damon Wright, member of the Board of Education, joins us this morning. Good morning, Damon. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Well, it's good to hear. <laughs> such enthusiasm. <laughs> well, I mean, we've got such great hosts today, so, I mean. Well, we we're loaded with them. It's overflowing. That could not be a good day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm not sure if you heard Melissa Powers' segment yesterday. Uh, I promise you Bill's not in the room, so you'll... <laughs> <laughs> she said, David's going to have it easy. Bill's not here on Thursday. Yes, but, but we do have Gilstrap. Gilstrap says he's bringing it today. He's, he's ready to go. Uh, Damon. Well, he started off with pernicious, so. It's <laughs> a good word. You don't hear it every day on the show. Uh, no. Hey, just, just to get to a few things in regards to the hiring of the new superintendent in Berkeley County, Ryan Sachs, out of Cabell. And you have your ear to the ground as well as anybody. And you've heard the complaints, and people think that this is a uh, precursor to Parks and Rec being cut, libraries being cut, because of some decisions that had to be made in Cabell County. I'm getting texts that says the Berkeley County Board of Education blew this one completely. This guy <laughs> is completely wrong for our area. We need our libraries. We need our parks. Can you address that, Damon, because this is the feedback I'm getting. Uh, well, yes, and actually, we in, we increased the money uh, going to um, some of those entities through the the last levy um, years ago. Before I was on the board, the budget was cut, and because there were budgetary issues. But this last uh, budget session we just had, we increased the amounts, not to the level they were before, but more than they were in previous years. So we are in no way looking to slash or uh, cut funding to those organizations. How much power does the superintendent of schools have to do that? Um, not much. Um, they can recommend it, uh, but they can't make the board vote, you know, in, in the majority to cut uh, funding to those organizations. It's up to the board to decide what's best, uh, what's the most fiscally responsible way to approach things. No, he can recommend cutting things, cutting positions, adding positions, but ultimately it comes down to the board to say um, yes or no. This was a unanimous decision. Was this your first choice, Damon, when you went through the resumes, or was this a decision you kind of came around to based on how others felt? Um, it, it, there was, it was actually close between Mr. Sachs and another uh, applicant. They, they were just very good. They were, so, which, which is, uh, a good problem to have when you have some very good uh, candidates. It's uh, it's a good thing to say, well, we can't really go wrong either way. Um, but I thought Mr. Sachs, um, his experience, um, his knowledge of West Virginia law and code, um, some of the bond initiatives he was able to get in Kabul, and mainly the academic performance that has increased in, in Kabul, that pushed him over the edge. And, of course, he just recently won Superintendent of the Year, so that also seems to confirm that he at least is doing something right. The deal starts with a three-year contract, starts out at 198 with a chance for raises and some other things as well. Uh, Damon, Mr. Stevens was given a one-year contract. You voted to retain Mr. Stevens and the 3-2 vote that ultimately uh, ousted him. Uh, was Mr. Stevens given a fair chance to succeed on his one-year contract? And in the aftermath of that, why the three-year deal for the new super? Um, well, actually, when um, we decided on Mr. Stevens, I was arguing for a longer contract for him. Um, mainly, I base a lot of my decisions on how I, the time that I would want to have, how I would want to be treated, et cetera, and I just felt then, when Mr. Stevens was initially given the one year, I thought he needed more than one year, but that was not um, – not everyone felt that way. And, of course, that's the way uh, things work out. If I'm in the minority sometimes, and I'm in the majority other times. So uh, I felt he needed more time then. I felt 
Um, he needed more time just recently. That's why I voted to retain him. And I feel that Mr. Sachs deserves time. So I did, I don't want to change um, just because I may have been upset that Mr. Stevens didn't get more time. And I didn't want to then be a detriment to the next person and hold that against them and say, no, we didn't give Mr. Stevens more time. So therefore we can't give Mr. Sachs more time. That That wouldn't make any sense. I'm sticking to the same mentality that I have. We need to give time for things to work out. Why a three-year contract as opposed to a two or a four? And was there some debate on the length? I know Melissa Power said she thought he should have gotten a four-year contract. Um, there was slight debate, but it really wasn't um, anything heated or anything like, no, it needs to be four or anything like that. I, I thought three was fair, um, especially given given his, his experience. Um, he I, And he did have a plan coming in, so I felt that with the transition plan he had and the other plans that he put forth during the interview that we should be able to see something within three years. Mr. Gilstrap. Okay, so we have this new reset. We got the, the new superintendent. We got our improvement plans from the state. We're all set, ready to go. How do we know if it's working? So what, what are the metrics that he's going to be judged by or that the, the school board is going to judge the the performance what test scores what performance standards should we all be looking at to make sure that we're actually improving um i think well it's, one it's going to take time to see those because um like right now we're waiting for last year's uh well the, the previous uh test they just took to be released so we know what happened with with our students just recently but um i'm looking for um uh, the test scores to start increasing. I'm looking for discipline numbers to decrease. Um, well, I shouldn't say decrease. I should say uh, be more consistent because if our staff are being consistent to policy, we may see our discipline numbers go up uh, in terms of more of the lower level infractions, but things like fights and more of the serious discipline problems, I would like to see those numbers going down. Um, but, the, you know, the low-level numbers, they probably will go up because if we're going to be consistent to policy, they should go up uh, because things have been lax for a while. Is it and, fair uh, to yeah. – can, can we set like a a hard goal? For example, right now, according to the numbers I have in front of me, 15% of eighth graders in Berkeley County are performing at grade level uh, in math. 28% of West Virginia eighth graders are performing at grade level math. Can we just set – a goal of 28% to perform at grade level, to, to perform at West Virginia level. And if we don't do that, we can say it's not working and we have to make changes. Well, um, well first I need to ask, so which, are you talking about the um, meeting we just had with the- These are numbers that- Are you talking about, or are you talking about the ones from the state? Uh, these are numbers that uh, Pat Murphy provided to us, uh, what, two or three weeks ago. Okay, okay. So, okay. so I want to make sure I'm correct. Okay, so he probably gave you some uh, state numbers. Um, so because he's with him being new and with who knows what changes, I would say. Or whatever the numbers year, are. Can, whatever, you, what, it doesn't matter. The absolute value of the numbers are, are irrelevant. I'm saying we, it seems to me that it would it'd be worthwhile to have hard numbers. If we don't get to this number, then we're not doing our jobs and then drive everybody to get to those goals. Have there been those discussions? Well, we haven't sat down as a group and discussed what goals we want to have for the superintendent. That, I mean, he hasn't even started yet. So right. um, we all, we annually, we will have a, a meeting together to decide as the five of us, what would we like to see? What goals would we want him to achieve? his first year, his second year, et cetera. Um, personally, I think um, we should be able to see the scores go up. Just, uh, say you say the 28% number, uh, I'll just use that one for example. I'd like to see it go up to maybe 30, 33, 34. I mean, I'm not expecting, they're not going to skyrocket. That's not going to happen. Um, but I, they're going to need to come up several points uh, to see for us to see, hey, okay, things are, we're moving in the right direction. Um, but one thing that we all have, always have to remember is the numbers and everything won't go up if, one, we don't have enough certified staff, and two, if we don't have a committed community and people following through on any of the policies that we have.
So we need buy-in from everybody in order for any of these numbers or any of our students' behavior or anything we look at to go up. One entity, if it's just the teachers we look at, they're not going to make have the impact if they don't have the administration supporting them or the school board or the parents or the community, whatever. So we can't look at it as just one part. It, it has to be taken as a whole. Work correctly. Your phone started to fritz there. Damon, you still with us? Yes, I'm still here. All right, there you go. Mr. Harvey. Good morning, Damon. When does he start, Mr. Sachs? July the 1st. He, he actually said, Oh, wow. Well, we asked him, When do you want to start? He, he said, When do you want me here? And we said, The first, though, that's when he's going to show up. So, to find a place to live here and, and, uh, in the meantime. Is he bunking with you and the family while he's waiting for a place to show up, Dan? <laughs> well, hell, he can sleep in the basement, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's not as easy to find a place. Um, so there, there was there was some criticisms in Cabell County about his performance. And, and you know, right, I, right. I understand that all superintendents receive criticism. And um, was that considered in the process? Yes, it was. Um, we, well, at least I personally, I went and I, I Google searched, I looked on Facebook, I, I saw all, all the various controversies, and I tried to um, get more than one side because, um, like anything, if I mean, there are certain Facebook groups, I'd say in Jefferson County, that are very critical of of, um, of, of the county <laughs> government. Maybe, maybe you've heard of those, only, Matt. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think <laughs> I've heard a little bit about that. But if you only read that group, then you're going to get a very jaded view of what's going on because there's there's always going to be things people don't want to happen. It seemed like most of the issues with him had to do with um, reducing the funding of Parks and Rec. Um, I didn't really see a lot of complaints about him academically. Um, and some people don't like his didn't, maybe didn't like his personality, but that's going to be you know with, with almost anyone. Uh, so I didn't see anything that was glaring like oh no we can't hire this person um so i i saw the concerns but considering the makeup of our, of our board um it also wouldn't be a board that would be bullied by anyone <laughs> i did not did not see that happening uh, a lot of strong personalities on the board um so so i don't see it. yeah i think it's, i think it'll be fine the cutting of funding for parks and rec and the libraries in cabell county let me and i just so I understand, had to do with the levy or a bond didn't pass. Well, it, they didn't. It didn't pass because he had proposed months previous, and I think Melissa may have, may have explained there was a lawsuit because he was cutting the funding, and it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said no, they can cut the cut the funding. There's nothing saying that they have to fund you at this high level. They can reduce the amount. Well, since that happened, they were like, oh, so we're going to make sure this levy doesn't pass just because of, you know we don't want that reduced amount in that levy we want you to run a levy and not reduce any of our funding we want to keep it the exact same amount and if you don't do that we're going to vote the levy down which is what they did so they went from reduced funding to no funding yes and they're going to I, i'm assuming they're going to run the levy again i don't know what their board's going to do or how much they're going to try to fund it at but uh, that was one of the big complaints so it was an all or nothing proposal and he said no <laughs> i believe if the if the levy fails in the primary that you can bring it back for the general i've yes, been, they, I've they been told bring it back, they're going to bring it back for the general but then after that they'll probably have to wait if it fails again in november i think they have to wait one or two years before they can run it again okay so the bottom line is all these concerns that are out there, uh, valid or not, were, were known to the board members and were investigated through questioning or independent research? Correct. We, def we definitely questioned and we did our own research. And, and it was unanimous that he was the right candidate for the job? Yes. It was a 5-0 vote. Yeah. Damon, I want to go to uh, an item which is very important to people in this area, or at least some because it gets brought up a lot. And that is the starting salary of $198,000, which is actually inflation adjusted uh, below market uh, in this area. Uh, even without inflation, it's, it's below market when you look at what you can get crossing the border. Now, it might not be within the state's confines, 
But for the Eastern Panhandle, you can cross the border and clearly get a lot more. How was the 198 figure settled on? Uh, well, we looked at actually well, what was he making in Cabell, which well, I believe would have been it? 192. Um, and he's moving to a more expensive area here uh, in the Eastern Panhandle. So we uh, negotiated and came up with a 198 figure um, to start. And plus, you know, with years of experience as doctorate, I know a lot of people in the community are like, well, you didn't give um, Mr. Stevens this much money or this much time. Well, Mr. Ste one Mr. Stevens was, was brand new, so um, with no experience. If he, had some, if he had come in, Mr. Stevens had had eight, nine, ten years as superintendent somewhere else, then the numbers would have been different. Um, so we felt starting him at 198 and working it that way would um, be reasonable. I know a lot of people also are concerned because he's making so much more than our teachers. Well, as, as again, as a board, we don't control teacher pay, uh, cooks, janitors, service personnel. We don't control any of their pay. We supplement. We just raise how much we're giving them for the housing allowance to try to give them more money. Um, but unfortunately, we can't raise their salaries as a whole by ten, fifteen thousand dollars a piece. Mr. Murphy was, I think, at two hundred six when his time as superintendent ended. As you mentioned, Ron Stevens one eighty five. This higher one ninety eight. Are you satisfied with all those numbers, Damon? Uh, yes. Um, I think, especially being on the inside and seeing how much responsibility a superintendent has and the twenty four seven nature of the job. Um, it, it seems reasonable. Um, and I guess people that want school systems to run like a business, then you have then if if you have that mentality, consider that it's a three hundred million dollar business and the CEO is only getting paid two hundred thousand dollars. Some people in the text that they send to me or in conversations with me say, just promote a principal, offer them one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars a year. Someone's going to do the job. Would that work? Uh, some of our principals make. Uh, close to that or more <laughs> so um and no well, another reason is because actually per state code the superintendent has to be the highest paid uh person and there are people that have been here for years that are making uh, more than that so we can't pay the superintendent less than the people that are under them so that that wouldn't make sense either I, I think you're missing the point. Pick that, whatever that number is, plus $25. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, uh, so to hire within, to, to advance a principal who's already in and make them the superintendent. Well, we, we could have. And, and we actually, um, in previous years, we had some principals uh, apply for the superintendent position. Um, and they, they were not selected. Uh, this time, uh, we also had, uh, there were some principals out of the 20, 20 applicants. Um we just felt that um, Mr. Sachs was the best candidate. So it's not that we were uh, didn't want, you know are totally against this uh, principal at all. I mean, we have excellent principals here in Berkeley County. Uh, some some of some applied, some didn't. You know, some some just don't. I mean, there's there are some people that are great at being principals that do not want the responsibility of being superintendent just because they know the demands of the job. Okay, so help me with the. Division of labor. Once July 1st comes and uh, Dr. Sachs takes over, does the board set the goals for the superintendent or does the superintendent tell the board what the superintendent's going to do and, and, and the board then supports his goals and objectives? What, what is that division of labor? Uh, no, actually, it's, it's a collaborative effort. We, because we don't want, we want to make sure that we all understand, okay, these are your goals. This is what we feel is attainable, and, and, and we go back for it and say, well, oh, yeah, I can do that. Or <laughs> you know, like we could be thinking totally unreasonably and not, make, and not make any sense, and he can explain, oh, yeah, that, that wouldn't work because of A, B, and C. And like, okay, that makes sense. And, and so we go back and forth, and it's like, okay, this is what we want you to do. This is what we feel you can get to, and we go from there. It's, it's not you will do this, and we give them goals that – they will not be able to obtain. It's like if your editor said, hey, we want that book, uh, that 50,000 word book in two weeks. Like, <laughs> come up with a new book, have it done, give it in two weeks, and, and that's all we're going to give you. You'd be like, that's, no, that's, I'm not going with that. That's not going to work. When, when, when doesn't that happen? <laughs> 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 um, I, 
so you mentioned some things that that are that get in the way of that are challenges of of improvements and among those are the lack of certified teachers and parental buy-in and and all of the those challenges that that are essentially constants within the school system what are the plans or maybe this is what you need to develop what are the plans to get past those if those are the constants that means we turn this into a math problem those are the constants and you guys are the variables and somehow you've you've got to come up with a formula of of, of improvement how do you get more certified teachers you've only got so much money you can't spend more so what is that plan and you have one minute to answer it Tim. <laughs> oh, okay well very quickly um one part of the plan that's already working or, or in the process is getting those that are permanent subs to go take the necessary classes to get certified. I know, uh, I believe at North, there are like, I think six or seven um, staff that are in, in line to get certified. So just getting who we have in there now to be certified and get the training that they need, have professional development, that will go a long way and keep, and those people being consistent and staying here and not um, staying for a year or two and then running off to Maryland or Virginia. So we have to make it the best workplace possible. Uh, we have to continue to reach out to the community, um, get people that are retired, people that work different shifts to come in and volunteer in our schools. And we can see an improvement and get you know parents uh, working with their children at home uh, and throughout this summer to get them ready for the next school year. Damon, okay. when's the next Board of Education meeting? Uh, July 1st, actually. July 1. Hey, thanks for joining us this morning. Oh, you are. oh one, one quick thing. I wanted to say uh, congratulations to Liam McCarthy for winning the WU Scholar Award and Deborah Sloat for winning the Spirit of the Land Grant Award from uh, Dr. G from oh, very, WU. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Have a great day. You're welcome. You too. Amen, Ryan.